very good evening. The podium's fine. I can be seen and heard. The perfect height. Honorable the Chief Justice of India, Justice Chandrachur, my colleagues present here, Justice Nanda, Judge High Court of Telangana, former judges of the Delhi High Court, Justice Dalwan Singh, learned Attorney General of India, Mr. R. Venkat Ramani, learned ASGs, Mr. Kapil Sibyl, President SCBA, Ms. Rachna Srivastava, Vice President SCBA, Mr. Vikrant Yadav, Secretary SCBA, President, Secretary, and executive members of SCORA, senior advocates, members of the Bar Association, Secretary General and Registrars from the Registry, my sister Neelu, family and friends, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. This speech is in continuation of my two addresses to the Bar. One, when I had said my goodbyes to my parent court, the High Court of Delhi, on being elevated as a judge, as a, as a Chief Justice of the State of Telangana. And the second one, when I had bid farewell to Telangana High Court on being elevated to the Supreme Court. I had stated in my first speech that my life could be slotted into three phases. The first phase commenced with the schooling through college till completion of law. The second phase was that of a first generation lawyer that lasted for 22 years. And the third phase commenced on my being elevated as a judge of the High Court of Delhi in May 2006. In January 21, I had concluded my farewell speech at the High Court of Delhi, stating that as the curtains were dropping on my third phase of life as a judge of that court, the call of duty beckoned me to the state of Telangana to discharge my duties as the first woman chief justice of that state. While bidding adieu to the Telangana High Court in August 21, I had mentioned that on the date of entry into the judicial system, we are all aware of our date of exit. Though I was ready with my bags packed for laying down office on completion of my tenure as a judge of the High Court on 1st September 21, Justice N. V. Ramana, the then Chief Justice of India, and members of the collegium that includes the CGI before us gave me an opportunity to serve in this court. Thus started the fifth phase of my life. Life came to a full cycle on my entering the portals of the Supreme Court. In the year 1984, I started my career as a fledgling lawyer in this court from the chambers of Justice Sunanda Bandari. In a couple of months, I had moved to the High Court to work in the chambers of Justice Y.K. Sabarwal, who went on to become the Chief Justice of India, and Justice Vijendra Jain, who demitted office as the Chief Justice of the State of Punjab in Haryana. My seniors were more than generous in giving me opportunities to hone my skills of drafting the smallest of applications to full-fledged plaints, to petitions, to appeals, and to appear and argue in ma uh, matters in the court. They not only trained me in legal jurisprudence, but also in court craft and above all, legal ethics and court courtesies. These included never turning one's back to the court when moving out of a courtroom, rising to give a seat to a senior colleague who may be standing in the aisle, waiting till the end for the court to rise if one was the last counsel whose matter had been taken up. All these lessons were honed under the strict tutelage of my seniors. At the same time, they opened their homes and hearth and accepted me as a part of their extended families for which I'm thankful. When I arrived in this court to take oath on 31st of August 21, there was some trepidation in my heart, particularly since the first bench in which I was assigned to sit was none other than the Honorable Chief Justice, Justice D.Y. Chandrachur, my batchmate from college who has always been known to be meticulous in reading the briefs, coming thoroughly prepared on facts and law, and being ever so respectful to members of the bar. There was so much to learn and absorb in the new working environment. At the same time, I came here with a heart full of gratitude as I was back in this court in a different avatar after a hiatus of about three and a half decades to be a part of the bench. 
it was unprecedented for nine judges to have taken oath together. As a part of that batch, nine of us have built a special bond of affection for each other and call ourselves V9. My senior colleagues and those who joined us after that have also weaved their way into my life. This phase of my life has been more than satisfying, as also challenging in different ways. Within a few months of my elevation to this court, my mother was diagnosed with cancer to which she ultimately succumbed in November last year. It was a struggle to find a balance between the commitments at work and at home. But, the unstinting, but for the unstinting support of my sister Neelu, I would never have been able to focus on my work and the demands that are made on a judge of this court. Though I have spent my entire life in Delhi and my legal career primarily in Delhi High Court, first as a practicing lawyer and then as a judge, and therefore a large part of the bar in both the courts is familiar to me since many lawyers practice in both the courts. The working of this court is entirely different from my experience in both the high courts that I've been to. In this court, we are expected to go through anywhere between 60 to 65 cases for admission on a good day and 80 to 90 cases on a bad day. Mondays and Fridays go in a whirlwind and two days before Mondays and Fridays that build up to the admission days is like participating in a never-ending marathon. Files just keep pouring in many times till the very last minute. But then one slowly gets into the road and accustomed to furiously working through huge briefs. The after notice miscellaneous days may not be so heavy, but to my mind, the level of preparation has to be the same. It just helps us keep pace with the number of cases and try to maintain a higher output vis-a-vis -vis input of matters. After all, we are here to serve the public who are the real consumers of justice. On the personal front, my mother held on for a year and after her diagnosis, and then her health started deteriorating. The pressure of work and the constant worry at the back of my mind took a real toll. But then, this is what our profession is all about, both as lawyers and as judges. Once we are in court, we try to keep aside all our worries for family and home and our personal problems, put our best foot forward to give our best to our work. I do try doing that. It is difficult to take off for even a single day. That guilt of 60 to 65 matters being adjourned for another day looms large in our minds. In my short stint in this court, and I will call it short since it's exactly three years and one day ago that I was elevated to the Supreme Court, I have been lucky to forge new bonds with my colleagues who have been more than generous in their affection and concern for me and my family. I have seen three chief justices functioning and sat in combination with 16 benches. I've had the pleasure of being a part of constitution benches that were addressed by the best legal brains in the country. Those arguments not only expanded the horizons of one's mind, they also threw up several constitutional challenges and kept one alive and ticking in every which way. The beauty of this court is that no matter is too insignificant for it not to be entertained. Sitting in this court, I have not only wrestled with complicated legal wrangles, questioning the varieties of statutes, and delved into fine nuances of the Constitution, I've also handled humdrum cases like those relating to MACT, bails, labor and service cases, and family disputes. These are matters that closely touch the lives of not only the litigants, but also deeply impact the lives of, lives of all the family members. They may not have serious monetary fallouts, but they have the underpinnings of life, of liberty, and livelihood for parties who pin their hope, and that is the last hope, on this court. Indeed, the onus on a judge of the Supreme Court of India is heavy, being the last court. At the same time, I've tried to remind myself through all these 18 years to wear the mantle lightly. On a lighter note, as the youngest member of my family of three women, having lost my father several years ago in the early 90s, 
When I entered the driveway of our home, I was always reminded by the family that I should remember to leave the mantle of a judge right there at the gate and conduct myself at home as normally as I did before becoming a judge. I can assure you that I have tried hard to do that, though my sister who's sitting in the audience may differ on this. On many an occasion, I was told that not only was I being too pompous, but was also using all kind of legal jargon in normal conversation, which was most unacceptable. Who knows that better than this audience? I'm sure that each of you have been accosted with these complaints by your near, near and dear ones at some stage. I have not only forged bonds with my colleagues, but over the years built personal relationships with my law clerks, starting with the first one to have starting with uh, the first one to have joined me in the High Court of Delhi, Ms. Padma Priya, who is present amongst us, who is no, now an advocate on record practicing in this court, to the current ones who are also here, Karthik, Anushka, Anish, Bindlish. I am immensely thankful for the wholehearted support of my former law clerks who had associated with me in this court, Mr. Utkarsh Kashyap, whose father is present amongst us, Mr. Esas Puri, Ms. Tejasvi and Shailendra, who are here, Ms. Aditi and Brahma were abroad doing their LLMs. Each one of them have worked meticulously and supported me, be it in doing research work or preparing notes of matters or collating material for speaking assignments. I'm thankful to the Secretary General, Mr. Atul Kurkar, Kurhekar, and the registrars and their team of officers and officials in the registry, especially the medical, protocol, and transport branches under the leadership of Mr. Satish Arora and the judges' administration, in particular, Gagan Soni. I also thank Dr. Shama Gupta for the medical assistance rendered by her and the team who are only a call away for us. My PSs, Ms. Kalyani Gupta and Shiv Kumar, and the senior PAs, Rachna Rakheja, Dilshad Ali, and Abhishek Sharma have gone beyond the call of their duty to assist me at work and take care of my needs, as also that of my family members, particularly during the critical phase of my mother's illness. I must thank my non-clerical staff working at home including Mr. Dilip Kumar, Mr. Shankar Prasad, Mr. Chokar, Mr. Abhin Manu Prasad, Mr. Dinesh Chan, Mr. Jay Bhagwan, and Ms. Bimla Rani, who was working with us for, from early days at the High Court and served us till she passed away in November 23, around the same time as my mother left. And in the Home Office, Mr. Mohan Lal, Mr. Vijay Bhushan, Mr. Prem Singh, Negi, Mr. Rahul, Mr. Satish Kumar, Mr. Mukesh, Ms. Krishan Kumar, my driver, Sefi, is a recent addition and must be named by me. My thanks goes out to my court masters, Mr. Nand Kishore, Ms. Geeta Ahuja, Mr. Pooja, Pooja Sharma, court clerk Himanshu, library clerk Deepak, court attendant Devanand, court moderator, Ms. Chandna, and usher, Mr. Ram Karan Singh. They have ably assisted me in discharging my duties in the courtroom. I must acknowledge the services rendered by my personal security officers, Mr. Sudhir and Mr. Sanjay, who have been with me throughout my tenure as a judge of the High Court and now this court. And also Mr. Ajay, who joined in on my elevation to this court. They are equally a part of my extended family. Last but not the least is the role of our family members who stand by us through thick and thin. My late parents and my sister have been my solid, unstinting supporters. I have drawn strength from their resilience and shall continue doing so in the future. Whatever I have achieved is due to this silent support of the family over the years. This brings me to the end of the fifth phase of my life. Before I ready myself to turn the pages of my book of life to start an exciting new sixth phase, I'm reminded of what the American nonfiction author Carl Newport said in his book, Deep Work, and I quote, when you work, work hard. When you are done, be done. I propose to experience what Jeff Foster, the British writer and speaker, describes as the fullness of emptiness and the sheer life of my unproductive moments. But that will only be to take a short pause long enough to breathe in some fresh air. I do remember stating in my farewell speech in the Delhi High Court that I have started my career by setting up a mini office in the boot of my car. With the grace of the Almighty and the good wishes of my loved ones, now that I lay down office, having served in the highest court of the land, 
Let me assure you, I do not intend to hang my boots literally, or shall I personalize it and say, store my sandals. Very recently, I was asked if I am retiring or re-attiring. It didn't take me a moment to say that I am re-attiring. This only means This only means that the blacks, the whites, and the grays will not take all the space in my wardrobe. As Socrates once moaned, beware the barrenness of a busy life. In my sixth phase of life, I will try and reattire myself in different colors of the vib cure and part take all the hues that life has to offer. This means work, but make time for family and friends, and reignite my interest in hobbies that I have long placed on the back burner. I have maintained, and I say so today, as judges, we are deputationists, and our parent cadre always remains the bar. I conclude by thanking you all for being a part of my journey for accepting me with <clears throat> all my follies and foibles, excuse me, <clears throat> for being generous with your kind words and gracious with your compliments. I accept them all with the humility at, the, at my command. Thank you for your time, for your patience, and your presence. <clears throat>